Friends, welcome back to Continues to Tick. And here we are once again with another dividend portfolio review. Time continues to pass, friends. It continues, you know, we're now in May, month number five. And isn't that crazy? For me, it just feels like we just got into 2024. We're nearly halfway into the year. And if you haven't, friends, if you haven't began to move on those goals that you set for this year, you're behind. This is why it's very important to make plans, execute, make new plans, goals, execute, because time passes. And if you do nothing, you do nothing. And that's just how life goes. As you guys could see for the title of this video, yes, we got a dividend portfolio review. And I'm gonna do that first. But just before we get into that, I just wanna share with you guys the topic for today's video, which use the timestamps down below to jump around. If you're waiting for the topic, go there. If you like the dividend portfolio review, just stand put here. We're gonna go into that next. But for the topic, friends, today I wanna to talk about five years after college, what's the workforce like? So it's gonna be from my experience, some general thoughts, I have some good points I wanna make. So use the timestamps down below, jump around if you need to, but otherwise, let's go. So here we are today, friends, at $81,629.58. This is a Jesse's cash flow portfolio, my dividend portfolio. And we started this in July of 2020, that crazy year. And here we are in 2024. And before you know it, we'll be in July 2024, four years into this. Time continues to pass, friends. One thing I will say, I don't know if it'll happen between now and my next video. You know, we do these every two weeks is, you know, we're going on a trip later this year. And just like I always talk about time passing and, you know, if you've been following this journey for a while, I've been kind of setting myself up for my next job opportunity, getting ready for a pay cut. And the point that I'm trying to make by saying all of this is that life happens, right? This journey of being a dividend investor is very long and life is going to continue to happen regardless and despite how your portfolio moves, right? You have to plan your career, you have to plan your time, you have to plan things intentionally, you have to set priorities, that is life. So my point to this second part of saying all this is be on the lookout. I have a trip coming up in the final month of the year in December. And you know, my parents really wanted to go to Cancun and you know, they're getting older now. My dad's gonna be 70, not this year, but next year. And my mom's gonna be 65 really soon so you know my parents are getting older you know maybe a lot of you guys are a little bit older in your life or maybe right around my age but one thing i'll always show on this channel is transparency the transparency of having to make decisions hard ones financially and balance those with life as it continues to happen and having to sell chunks of the dividend portfolio this year it's gonna be selling a little bit to go to Cancun, right? In anticipation of a pay cut. So where does the hit get taken? Will probably get taken from this dividend portfolio. So I'm just saying that, and I'll talk about it more once it happens. Just letting you know, these are those hard decisions that have to happen in life. If you've had to make some already, just know I'm right there with you. These are hard. But for me, I always prioritize memories, life, family over money right that's just me i try to balance both and when you balance both at one point or another you're gonna have to prioritize one over the other so just letting you guys know that maybe some of you guys can resonate with that but i just felt like it's important just to share that right preface this before it happens but the decision's been made i just haven't done it yet it will be happening soon enough my mom's always been wanting to do a resort style she's never experienced it and you know it's going to be our family trip and growing up we've never gone anywhere like that so looking forward to it you guys will be seeing that unfold especially once we get in december but friends like i said we're at eighty-one thousand six hundred and twenty-nine dollars and 58 cents all time on the chart this is what the money weighted rate of return of 43.21 percent but if we go to let's see our holdings this is unrealized gain of $11,462, or a gain of the portfolio of 16.34%. 
I figured out that this is the best way to tell you <laughs> my return for the portfolio just because the money weighted rate of return. I'm personally not a fan of that, but you know, this is M1 Finance now, so we'll work with it. And as far as dividends earned all time, it says $5,449 and nine pennies. And over this past week, if we just wanna see how it's performed, it says a money weighted rate of return of 1.24%, a market gain of $514, and dividends earned of only 10. So a little bit light on the dividends this week, but that's how it goes. It comes and goes. Over the past month, $80 earned in dividends, 550 for the market, uh, money weighted rate of return was relatively flat. But let's go back to the all time chart here. We did one of the big reviews, you know, two weeks ago. This one's just a little quick one, just to kind of tell you where we're at, give you a little update, and you know, the journey continues. I'm gonna continue to be here and if you're here friends or not i'm gonna be here uh, come and go as you please you know i will always continue to document this journey i know there's a lot of dividend investors out there our journey unfortunately or fortunately is very long we have a lot to experience and learn about this and you know might as well just watch paint dry together right <laughs> that's how slow this seems to be but we enjoy it right we enjoy the back end thought of just building up this passive stream funnel of income, right? One day getting to this good place, looking back and saying, you know, taking that deep breath and realizing I'm glad I started this blah, blah, blah decades ago, right? I'm glad. And that will be me, you know, as long as I'm alive, as long as I'm living, I make it to this point in my life, right? In retirement, that will be me. And this is my strategy. It's not gonna be a straight line all the way up. It's gonna have some bumps in it. Be on this ride with me, friends. You know, we're all in this together and it's fun. Slow and fun. And a little bit with that tangent out the way, it looks like our best return continues to be tech. Oftentimes it's because of NVIDIA. It's been NVIDIA for the longest time with 1,035.65%, which is insane, has a gain of 7,000. So I'll see maybe when I go to sell, you know, my portfolio, I may sell a chunk of Nvidia. I'm just so high up in the green on that. It might be worth it to sell only a chunk of my Nvidia for this trip to uh, Playa de Carmen, right? I did it last year for Greece. I might do it again for this trip. You know, maybe Nvidia is just paying for all my trips in the moment. <laughs> you know, it's always hard to sell though, you know, those stocks that are doing so well, but sometimes it's good to because you never know if it'll pull back. You'll never know if you'll lose some. I might consider that actually. And as far as the next one under tech, the sector with the best return is energy at 112%, followed by financials and so on and so forth. Going into my worst performers, healthcare, still minus 19%. Let's take a look at that actually. So they're all in the red, clearly. Pfizer, of course, continues to still get those hits minus 34%, Medtronic minus 21%, and Johnson & Johnson, right? I'm a healthcare worker, I'm a nurse, I believe in healthcare. You know, it'll come around, it's just, you know, I think it's important to be balanced with all sectors. You know, they're not all supposed to be in the green all the time. And for me, it doesn't worry me, it's just the reality of being a, an investor in general, right? And having a portfolio. And if you're a dividend investor, it's better to be diversified than to be under diversified. In my opinion, it's been my strategy and I'm just gonna continue to roll with it. You know, apart from this, communications and consumer staples, you know, 1%, not even 1%, uh, these are relatively flat. So I just see them as relatively flat, no gain, no negative. They're just here. And so for the most part, my portfolio is all pretty good, except healthcare. And let's just take a look at the activity section. You know, for the moment, friends, I continue to, you know, funnel $100 every single Friday into this dividend portfolio. That is my bare minimum. Even when I get this next job promotion that is technically giving me a pay cut, you know, this is what I'll be funding into it, which is my bare minimum. You know, $100 every week, about $433 a month when you break it up, you know, divide it over 52 weeks and stuff like that, right? You do the math, $433 a month. And you know, that is the pace that I'm going at. And if you've seen my other videos, you know, going into those big dividend portfolio review videos where I tell you how much I make in dividends 
from this portfolio. It's currently around $2,400. So all that's getting dripped into the portfolio as well. So $2,400 plus everything I'm putting into it. You know, it's a decent amount going into my portfolio every year. And that's my baseline for now. And I'm okay with it. And as far as some dividend payouts, you know, we got one from Verizon, AT&T, JP Morgan, McCrath Rent, AMT, Cisco, Oracle, just to name a few over the past two weeks. So it's been good, friends. We continue onwards. And that's going to be it, friends, for the portfolio review for this week. It's just a short and quick one. I hope that some of this is either inspirational, motivational, and just comforting. You know, you're not alone on this journey. Let's go into the topic now for this week's video. All right, friends. So here we are now in the topic for today's video. We got five years after college. What is the workforce like? So what inspired me to make this type of video, right? Or choose this topic for the video today? Well, I've been in the workforce for over five years now. Not quite six, but a good five and a half. And, you know, I will say, right, it's not exactly how I first imagined it to be. I, I thought it would be a little bit easier. It turned out to be harder. I got some hard reality checks and I'm going to be going over those with you. You know, so as we scroll down here, I chose four talking points. I'm going to cover each of them. They're all slightly different, but there's the same, there's the same underlying thread amongst all of them, you know, which maybe you'll kind of see what I mean as I talk about them. But for the first one, I'll be talking about, you know, determining the end, right? What would, what, what is the end of our financial journey, right? On, on the second one, I'll be talking about money being a requirement for comfort. You know, is that the case? And on the three, I'll talk about, you know, living now versus living later and what that means to me. Maybe you can resonate with some of those thoughts that I share. And then the fourth one, right? Is the workforce really what they say? Is it actually a rat race, right? I know we've all heard about that, especially if you're into investing, right? And caring about your money. You've heard that. I know you have. So for this first one, right? Let me just highlight it here. So do you determine the end, right? Who determines the end of this workforce thing? And a hard reality is, you know, we do, right? I'm going to just speak on myself as an example, right? When I first entered the workforce, even just before, I always kind of thought that this was the reality of it, which was this idea that I'm going to be working forever until I can afford to not work again, right? or until I'm forced to not work anymore due to old age, right? Like you're, you're physically unable to continue to work, right? And someone has to tell you that, right? Whether it's you having to file for disability because you have to, or just society tells you, hey, you're no longer hireable. Like we can't use you anymore. So those are the thoughts that popped into my mind before I even got into the workforce. I got into the workforce and I realized that, that that is actually the case, you know, and further than this is that it's really up to you, right? No one's going to tell you, hey, just stop working like, oh, OK, you get to this age and you can you can actually stop working. No one's going to say that to you. It's always going to be up to you to determine the end point. This is why it's very important, right, to plan financially for retirement as soon as possible, because if you don't, you're just going to work even longer than what you were actually meant to work for, for those that actually planned, if that makes sense. So for me, this was something that just got solidified when I started being in this workforce for a certain amount of time. It just solidified this idea. There's summer vacations gone. You don't get breaks anymore. The only time off you get is when you request for it, you know, at your employer. And even then you have to ask, you don't just get it they can also say no and you not get time off, right? And that really sucks, but that is the workforce. And apart from these breaks, right, these vacations that you get, which are about two, maybe three weeks a year, four weeks if you're lucky, apart from that, your only other break in this workforce is retirement, which is a date that you have to work on, you have to plan, you have to fully like think about on your own. If you don't, no one's going to just tell you, hey, oh, yeah, you made it and you don't have to work anymore. The end point is either retirement that you planned or you work forever. 
and you work forever until you're physically unable to work anymore, either by your choice or by someone else's choice. So this is why in the workforce, it's very important to think about retirement. And I'm just gonna remind you, if you haven't started your retirement journey or your planning for that, you gotta be careful, friends, because the longer you wait, the longer you're gonna have to wait to stay in the workforce. And that's just the reality of it. For me, I kind of knew this going into the workforce, so I started my dividend portfolio early, you know, methodically decided to work for the state of California so I can at least have a pension building up on the back end. So like, for example, I could get to the age of 50 or 52 and they say, okay, you actually can retire. This is your earliest retirement age. So I have some certain safety nets in place to help me out. But most people don't think this way. Most people just kind of go to work and they just exchange their time for money. They don't think about these things. So allow this to be a reminder to you either to give you reassurance that if you're planning for your retirement, you're doing the right thing. And if you're not, use this as a reminder to really plan to do this soon because it's very important. Otherwise, jokes aside, you will literally be working forever. And trust me, you don't want to do this. And by work, sure, we all classify work as something, right? We all think of it as something that means something to us, right? For me, when I think of work, it can mean two different things. Work for an employer or work for myself, right? Do things that, for me, I'm doing for myself, and it's still work, but it doesn't feel like the same as it does as working as a nurse, if that makes sense. So yeah, you know, I still want to work forever, but not for an employer. I want to continue to work in a way that doesn't feel like work to me, right? So hopefully some of this is helpful to hear. And so let's go to the second one here, right? Let's continue to move along. So money is a requirement for comfort. I wrote that as a statement, not a question, because that's something that I recognized to be the case, right? After being in this workforce for some time, a reality of being in the workforce is money. You're exchanging your time for money period, right? We don't work for free. And we do live in a capitalistic society where you have to do this. And you can view it as a game, right? If you don't exchange your time for money, you're probably going to be homeless. You're probably going to be houseless, jobless. Like you're not going to be living in society. You're going to be living outside or amongst society, but not living according to the rules, right? Which brings up other types of debates. But if you're trying to play the game, right, of this capitalistic society, buy a house, get the car, go on vacations, buy food, buy necessities, you know, money is a requirement. And the more money you have, the more comfortable you'll be. The last thing you want to do is live paycheck to paycheck and always be worrying about money, right? In that case, you'll recognize how important money is as a requirement for comfort, right? If you've ever stressed about a bill to pay, or you know, not having enough money to pay for something, you're gonna realize how uncomfortable that makes you feel. And that is a reality of the workforce, is understanding that you have to do this. You have to play and engage in the workforce game, exchange that time for money, because you need that money to be comfortable. And the more money you have, the more comfortable you'll be. And sure, you can make a bunch of money and you can spend a bunch of money, right? But that's not the point that I'm trying to make. The point that I'm trying to make is have enough money that there's excess. And then yes, you have to make financial decisions that are wise to then have excess money. But to have excess money is to be comfortable, right? You need this money as a tool to live in this life. It's just the reality of the situation. It's something that you're gonna realize by being in the workforce over time. And you're gonna see that the people that are most comfortable is because yes, they're wise with, with their money, but it's also because they have excess money. They're finding ways to have excess money. That is how you are comfortable in this life. So that's just my point number two. And as we continue to move on, friends, these are fun. You know, I like thinking about stuff like this. I don't know if you guys do as much, but I mean, if you're here, you know, thanks for listening. <laughs> but this third one, right? Live now or live later. Before I entered the workforce, I never really thought of this. It didn't really cross my mind. I didn't even know that I wasn't living or, you know, if I was living, it didn't really, I didn't really care about it, right? When I enter the workforce, right, your vacations are solely up to your employer, right? Your time off is solely up to your employer. Sure, you can quit your job and go travel, 
that's a decision. Also, a decision is working, right? And not taking vacation and trying to get money, right? Exchanging that time for money, not using that time for vacation and free time. What I, what I mean by all this is that in the workforce, you know, engaging in this, in this capitalistic society of needing money to be comfortable, you're gonna come up to this really big conundrum, right? I call it life's greatest conundrum. I've said it before in, in many of my videos, right? This, this point of life's greatest conundrum that I think we all will eventually realize is that there has to be a choice made, right? You can't choose both. You can choose both simultaneously and try to create balance. That's really the only option I've found to be a solution. But at some point you have to choose, right? Do you live now or do you live later? And I'm gonna give you both, right, as scenarios. So you choose to live now, right? What does that mean? That means you don't really care about m making money, building wealth right now, right? I'm 28, let's say I don't really care about money. I don't really care about my dividend portfolio. I don't really care about setting a foundation in my career. I'm just living now, right? I'm traveling all over Baja, California. I travel to Europe. I'm just backpacking, just living in the moment, right? Not really caring about my financial future, the strain financially I may face in the future. Don't really care about it. I'm living now. That's a choice. The other choice is living later, right? By, and by living, I mean living the life that you would full heartedly want to live. Live later, right? So let's talk about this one now. This is someone for me, I'm 28. I'm grinding right now. I'm building a foundation in my career, you know, investing wisely, saving my money and planning financially for my future retirement, right? So that way I have a good cushion, a good comfortable foundation set whenever I hit my retirement age, right? I'm sacrificing my day now, my life right now for a better future, a more comfortable retirement into my golden years, right? That's the other example. Life's greatest conundrum is trying to do both at the same time, right? It's what we call balance. In life, it's very hard to find balance. And in the workforce, it's very hard to find balance. It's very hard to one, live your authentic, full-hearted life that you would love to live now and also plan financially, save wisely, invest smartly for your future in a couple decades when you're in your golden years. It's so hard to do both. So at some point in this workforce thing, you're gonna have to choose one or the other or find your best means to balance it all out. The balance for the average person, right, is you work, you work all year, work for decades, and you take maybe one, two, three, maybe a max four weeks off a year, right? Out of 52 weeks in the year. So that means you work 48 weeks, you get four weeks off, you know, and on those times that you have off, you live your life. On the weekends that you're off, you live your life, right? Every other moment is dedicated to making money, playing the game, investing, and sacrificing your present moment for your future moment, right? That's your balance. I call it life's greatest conundrum because it kind of moves like a swing, right? Some days it's live in the moment, oftentimes it's live later, and it just kind of moves like this. And to do both at the same time is almost impossible, right, for the average person. You eventually at some point have to choose. And if I had to tell you which one I'm choosing, I'm leaning more into living later, right, clearly. I'm investing in my dividend portfolio, I'm trying to set a foundation in my career so I make more money in the future, I'm trying to worry less into my golden years and worry more now, right? As opposed to worrying less now when I'm younger and having to worry more later, right? It's all a choice. So this is an interesting one. I always like thinking about it. I call it life's greatest conundrum. I wonder what your thoughts are, if you have any. And for this last one, friends, right? Let's talk about this one. Is the workforce really a rat race? You've heard me too talk about the cheese, right? It's like we're a mouse on a wheel spinning, getting trained for the cheese. We continue to show up for the cheese. And well, what is the cheese? The cheese is that reward, is that financial compensation, right? Is our paycheck. That is the cheese. We are trained every day to go to work in exchange for this paycheck. You know, we do that day after day after day after day. And that is the workforce. Yes, it does seem like a rat race because we're all doing it and it almost seems like only a certain amount of people get up to the top. You can mix in personal development in here and you can see that most people just do the same thing 
and it's very a mundane lifestyle. A lot of people don't push themselves and some people move up higher than others and so on and so forth. There's just a lot involved. I would say just in a general sense, you know, is the workforce a rat race? And it kind of does feel like it. And that is a reality of the workforce. It's kind of hard to swallow sometimes, but when, when the workforce feels very mundane, you know, just very typical, and you know you're tired and you still have to go in regardless of how it is that you feel because you need the money to survive the next day, the next week, the next year, the next decade, it does begin to feel like a hopeless game, right? With no end goal. But this is why it's important to think of the future far ahead into the future so you can kind of choose a course, choose a path, and just execute it. And hopefully, over the course of time, right, you end up where it is that you envisioned. But you have to hit your base hits. Don't just swing for a home run and miss and get discouraged and just kind of flop in your career, flop in investing, and get to, you know, your golden years and you don't have anything, right, to speak for yourself. You know, you have to hit the base hits. You have to focus on the small things. And all these small things add up, right? Investing wisely, spending money wisely, choosing an investment course, right? A path of investing that works for you, setting a foundation in your career, building career development, making more money as you work more, right? Or get older and wiser, make more. You know, these are things to do. In short, I think it does kind of feel like a rat race, but I try not to think about it too much because I think a lot about personal development and I find ways to make it more interesting than what it really is, right? By creating YouTube channels and doing other things on the side and just building up myself personally. These are all the four things that I wanted to just touch on in today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed some of these topics. I'm curious, you know, leave a comment down below if anything calls to you or you want to engage in any type of discussion. You know, my comments are always open. I'm just curious, you know, this is the workforce after five years and I feel like I've learned it already. I don't know what another five years is going to make a difference for, you know, as to how I'm feeling about it. You know, I think I've accepted the workforce and initially going from college into the workforce was very difficult, but five years into the workforce now, it's going to be the same in another five years, the same in another decade from there, and the same probably in another decade. It might feel a little better when I get closer to retirement. It might feel a little lighter. You know, maybe after a couple decades, it might feel a little lighter because I know I chose the right path. But for now, I'm right in the middle of it, in the thick of things, and it just continues, friends. But as always, that's going to be it for this week's video. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you guys were able to enjoy this one. And as always, I will see you guys in two weeks. And until then, take care.